move on, shift into gear? No, nope. just uh, shift into drive and it just, nothing. No shit. Hi, I'm Tate. And I'm Danny. This is our story. In 2015, we quit our jobs and embarked on a five year world adventure. We sailed from New Orleans to Panama, lived in exotic locations, swam with sharks, and ate a ton of fish. But we are just getting started. In 2016, we put our boat Sundowner on the hard and started a new adventure in our Class A RV. Join us as we explore North America. We have no hard plans and no idea where we'll end up. What a way to live. Part of RV cruising, whatever you do when you're out on the road, you're on your own, you have to take care of business. We heard a strange noise and I pulled into a parking lot to check our trailer and everything. It was all okay. Tried to shift into drive and nothing happened. Um, shifting the transmission to drive, literally nothing happened. So, um, I've crawled up under the vehicle and the linkage to the transmission is right here. This little thing pulls and pushes and that's what puts your car in drive. And as you can see, there's no pin or bolt here uh, where one belongs. So it's obviously fallen out, broken or something else. I don't know how this happened. Uh, we're going to try to fix it and uh, get on our way. Interesting problems. He doesn't cost $100 an hour. Yeah, I do. He only requires martinis and pipes and maybe a little bit of other things. <laughs> Looks all right. Tate called the National Park Service um, of North Carolina, and they gave us some information on where to park the RV near the Blue Ridge Parkway. So now we have to find it. It's some down some road. It's not on uh, any website or anything. So we're gonna try to find it now. Unfortunately, we never found that spot. As we were driving along some of the back roads in North Carolina, I noticed the vehicle dragging to one side, and we smelled something burning. Brakes are hot. So we're having a brake problem now? The brakes were sticking, and now it smells like burnt rubber. Tate's going to the city we just passed to find some help with our brakes mechanic. And it's Good Friday, of course. This is only our first day leaving Uncle David's house, headed to the Blue Ridge Parkway, and we've run into two major issues. Tate is left on the motorcycle to try to go find a mechanic to help, and I am left guarding the RV. Um, hopefully we can come back and get it figured out. It's Good Friday, of course, and Easter weekend is this weekend, so probably not a lot of people are at work. But um, it's a nice place to be stranded. There's a beautiful river right there. There. Not a terrible place to be stranded. I went into town, no one will come work on this, towing only, $700 to tow it, and then we gotta deal with the labor. So we got one chance tomorrow to not take a tow truck? I guess. I'm gonna try to bleed the brake caliper on that side. I can't loosen the bleed bolt right now. I think it's just too hot. So I'm going to let it sit overnight and uh, give it a try. And if I can't get it open, we'll have to tow it. 700 bucks. Yep. Just to tow it. Just killing time with one of our favorite games. He's got me in check. I think I'm losing. It's Easter Sunday and uh, we're still stuck here on the side of the road and so we figured we'd make the most of it and we're gonna go for a ride in some of these twisty mountain highways. We're eight miles away from the Blue Ridge Parkway. 
Awesome. Brown Mountain Overlook. It's very foggy today. I went down to the general store and called our insurance company uh, to get a tow. And it turns out that they only cover 15 miles of towing, so we're going to have to pay for the other 15, 20 miles out of the way, and it's going to be about 300 bucks. So that's not fun. And I came back here, and I've also discovered the brakes aren't locked up anymore. Woohoo! Don't Yay. know why. But um, do we cancel the tow, or do we get towed and have it checked out? You know, what do we do? I don't know why they locked up. I think we're going to get towed. And so I turned the RV around in place, and we awaited the tow truck to pull us to Boone, North Carolina, where the shop that would work on the brakes is. The tow truck's here. He's a lot cheaper than Carolina Coach, and his shop can do the work, so we're going to send it with him. We got the RV turned around the road. We're going to disconnect the drive shaft and then uh, tow it, and we're going to follow him on the bike. This was my first time being involved in a tow of a vehicle this heavy or this large. Our Class A RV weighs about 16,000 pounds, and it was sort of heart stopping watching it drive down the road in front of us. But we were treated to beautiful views as we ascended the mountain into Boone, North Carolina. Did it stick? It did. It did stick bad, but it's just as free as you can go now. Yeah. I had to two-hand it. Yeah. To get it to turn. So, you know, we're going to... Take it off? Go ahead and... Yeah, I'm going to see what the caliper looks like, but probably going to end up replacing both the caliper and the hose. Okay. We, we decided to check out a local brewery while our RV is getting worked on in the shop. The Appalachian Mountain Brewery here in Boone, North Carolina. Oh, hello, thank you. They have a cucumber Berliner. Why isn't it? Y'all start tab. Thank uh, you. Yeah, please. You got a card, I'll just swap it and hand her up at you. <laughs> eight o'clock in the morning and it's 46 degrees in the RV. We had to spend the night in the shop of the, uh, the RV shop. And we're here in the mountains and it's so much colder up here. I have to get the heater out. Since we're up on Jack's in the yard, I had to move the bed around so that we sleep um, with our head elevated. <laughs> so that we don't wake up with all bloated heads and everything. Well, here we are the next day. Um, we've got one caliper changed and one brake line changed. And we're waiting on the other brake line and tra trailer brakes. And then we should be on our way. Trailer tires. Trailer tires. <laughs> we're replacing the tires because they're kind of dry rotted. Mechanics didn't get the um, other brake line they were waiting for until just a little while ago, and it's already nearly five o'clock. So it looks like we'll be spending the night again in the parking lot at the mechanic shop. <laughs> it's um, it's kind of interesting living in an RV while there's people working outside. It's a little bit weird, and it's really cold outside. We're at the top of a mountain, like 20, uh, 3,800 feet or something. And it's chilly out there, so it's not very inviting to do things outside. We're going to test the brakes today. I have to help Tate um, back out of this really small spot in this busy area. The 
this really busy road right next to Appalachia State University. We are testing the brakes and now there's a funny noise. So in the uh, search to find what the strange noise that's materialized is, we've uh, pulled out the wheel bearing. And uh, the grease in there is pretty much burnt and melted. Uh, the, wheel, the tire had a little bit of a wobble and they're going to repack it with wheel bearing grease and hopefully that fixes it. Oh yeah, well, show us the, uh, <laughs> the magic here. So we thought we had everything figured out, but we don't. We changed the, we re-greased the wheel bearings, um, the outer wheel bearings, and there's still a noise, wah, 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 when we're driving. So now they're going to replace the internal bearing, and hopefully we can get out of here soon. <laughs> what do you think, babe? We're down. Will continues to show us the magical inner workings of things. Who's the inner wheel bearing? <laughs> oh. Okay, take two. The bike's all strapped on and we're headed to the Blue Ridge Parkway. Cross your fingers. As I'm sure all you internet experts have already deduced, it was the inner wheel bearing. We suspect that stopping with the brakes so overheated expanded the metal in the bearing and warped the race. After replacing it, the sound went away, and so off we went on the Blue Ridge Parkway, abandoning the first campsite we'd hoped to stay at. We came to the next one, which we found on freecampsites.net, down a long gravel road, but unfortunately it was closed. The ranger there told us of another one nearby, Victor Falls, so we took a long, winding, side-of-the-mountain gravel road heart stopping as we went down it and pulled into a beautiful campsite where we hope to stay for at least two weeks. We finally made it to our campsite off of the Blue Ridge Parkway. We went kind of on a detour looking for South Toe River Campground and it was closed. Yeah, Black, Black Mountain Campground, South Toe River, all that. They had the road closed off. Apparently there was a hemlock kill and they weren't letting people through. And, uh, and the campground didn't open for another 15 days. So one of the rangers was nice enough to uh, tell us about this spot, which we had also seen online, but uh, didn't give it much thought, but he said it would be perfect, so now we're here. And it's beautiful. There's uh, an old campsite, this old, um, I mean an old home site. This is a, like a chimney and the RV. There's like a creek nearby and firing. Woo. This is to you, baby, for driving up and down those mountainous roads and taking it like a champ. Cheers. Hmm. You're a boss. So it's our second day at Victor's Field, and instead of being cooped in the RV all day, we have hiked around even though the weather is pretty rainy and misty but we wanted to check out our surroundings and I think we found Victor's Field and conveniently enough the National Park Service um, offers a disabled hunter's blind for people with disablements they want to come shoot a deer or a hog and yeah it is it is raining right now but I think the weather is supposed to get better in the next um, few days so I'm looking forward to that oh I gotta get out of the rain <laughs> Victor's Field did turn out to be an ideal campground. Beautiful fields, streams, creeks, trees, everything around us is just gorgeous. We didn't know what to do with ourselves surrounded by so much beauty after being in the shop for so long. There's this really cool stream right next to the RV. Another great thing about Victor's Field is its proximity to the Blue Ridge Parkway, which allows me to jump on it and go places quickly. 
I'm up here at Black Mountain Overlook and I'm trying to get an internet signal so that we can activate our video editing software which requires a signal uh, it requires you to log in every week or so and we're down in a valley where there is no internet so I came up here to the overlook to see if I could get a signal from up here you can see it's up pretty high elevations almost 3900 feet uh, and we're way down there in that valley somewhere so we'll see if I can get a signal here and if you're watching this it means that eventually we did find a signal somewhere up in the mountains a place to upload this video from and then it's back home down our little twisting winding mountainous road which is much less scary on the motorcycle than it was the RV and back into the campsite where we'll be for a little while. Next stop, Kentucky. We're headed to the distilleries around the state. So if you're near Louisville or Frankfurt and you want to get in touch and be part of our adventure, please get in touch with us. <laughs> We're going home. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give us a thumbs up. And if you didn't, leave us a comment. Tell us what we can do better in the future. Thanks for watching.